Hey, what's up? Derek from Nerd or Die here, and I am excited to bring you this brand new tutorial for Capsule Craze. It's an all new alert and channel point widget that you can use with your stream. And since it's Halloween season, we might have a spooky version as well coming very, very soon. So make sure you're checking out the website. We have just a ton of stuff. We have a Halloween sale going on right now. We have a bunch of free stuff as well. If you haven't seen the alert from last year that spells out your name on a Ouija board or spells out the name of your uh, donators and all things like that, make sure to go check that out. But anyways, let me show you how to set up this brand new alert because it's very simple to set up, but it has a ton of options built in. You can customize your emotes. You can customize the scale, the colors, all sorts of things. Let's get right into it. All right, so I have everything downloaded here and unzipped on my desktop. And once you grab that from the store, you can go ahead and open up this folder. We're going to have some instructions for you in the start here. This is going to be basically the tutorial that I'm covering right now. Uh, we're going to have the included images, which are going to be all the default emotes that come with this. But of course, you can use your own and then some support links as well. Then you will see two sections here for alerts and channel points. And I just want to reiterate here that the Halloween alerts and channel points will install the same. The Halloween version just is a free one that doesn't have as many custom options as this. So I do want to point that out that you can watch this video and get that one set up in the exact same way. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to show uh, how to install in Streamlabs first, just really, really quick. And then I'm also going to hop into Stream Elements and show you all the custom fields. And I want to make sure you know that it's very uh, similar. All the custom fields are exactly the same. So if you want to customize things, you're going to need to just look for the custom fields in both. And I'll show you where to find those. So in Streamlabs, just go ahead, double click the link. Once you're logged in with your Twitch account, you'll be able to just copy it into a new theme. So you can see I have a bunch of themes already. Um, if I wanted to, I could create a new theme just very quick and then import it into here. So let me just go ahead and just create a new theme. Sometimes I've noticed that Streamlabs is a bit weird. So sometimes I actually have to create the theme first and then import into it. Sometimes you don't. But anyways, we can go ahead and just test this really quick. We'll send through a follower alert just to make sure everything's working and you'll see it kind of pop in. And while it looks quite big because it is um, a bit higher resolution, you will be able to adjust this as needed. And I'll show you how to do that very, very shortly. And um, this is also kind of, it, it's kind of responsive in a way. So in this little preview window, it might not look exactly like you'll see it in your stream. So let's go ahead and show you how to get to the custom fields. And to do that in Streamlabs, you just scroll down right here, click the custom fields section, and you'll see all of these crazy options that we've included, like your images and all that. So before I go ahead and talk about these fields, let me show the stream elements users how to install this as well. That way we can all be on the same page and get everything done quickly and easily. All right, so for stream elements, it's a very similar. Just go ahead back into the folder here and back in the alert section, we're gonna click stream elements and then you'll see Twitch and YouTube uh, for Capsule Craze. Click the appropriate uh, platform that you're streaming on and you'll see it just get imported in right away. Um, don't look at the name. We had some working titles that we were working through, uh, but Capsule Craze is what we went ahead with. And so um, let's go ahead and click the alert box. This is kind of the important section here. Now let's send a test again really quickly, just so um, you can make sure everything's working. And I want to note there is a little bit of a delay on when you click this. This is actually intentional. Um, that way it plays through properly. There isn't any, um, you know, issues with the playthrough because it is quite a complex um, kind of animation. So we did put a little bit of delay to make sure all your files are loaded up, all the images are loaded up and all the sounds are loaded up so that they sync properly. Um, so do be aware of that. And now in both Streamlabs and Stream Elements, let me show you how to put it into OBS. So for Stream Elements, we're just going to copy this link up here. And then back in OBS, we'll go ahead, just delete these two uh, since I'm kind of just working on a new thing here. And we'll add in a browser source and just paste that in and then set your resolution. So usually 1920 by 1080 is a um, good recommendation. So if I go ahead and just test the follower event again, we should see one come through um, for OBS here for stream elements. And the same can be done in Stream Labs as well. Just the slight differences up here. Just click this URL and add it into OBS. 
And from there, we'll be good to go on all the kind of installation things. If you're new to streaming, go ahead and ask in the comments below if you have any questions about installing, but it's all pretty straightforward and we make a bunch of videos about this. So check out our other videos on the channel if you're having any kind of issues. Before I get too deep in this video, I do wanna give a huge shout out to Miss B-Bell Games. Thank you so much for recommending this idea to us. Uh, she's a long time community member. Um, and when she sent over the ideas like, hey, you should make a gotcha machine and then even some other ideas, we quickly jumped on this and we just love the idea. So um, I just wanna give a huge shout out to her and then everyone else in our community that will recommend us ideas. Uh, we're always listening and always looking for something fun and new to do. So if you have any recommendations, leave them in the comments below, but let's continue on with the tutorial. So for this part of the video, I really wanna cover all the different options that you can kind of customize because I imagine a lot of us don't like the same kind of um, prizes. We don't like the same colors, all sorts of things. So again, um, the custom fields from Streamlabs is gonna be the same for Stream Elements. Just in Stream Elements, it's in a little bit different of, of a place. So you actually click the settings option here and then you'll see all the different alerts that are set up. So we're gonna click this little gear icon and then the custom fields here are actually right all here. So let's go ahead and extend the main options. And we'll just take this bit by bit um, to kind of give you an idea of what everything does. That way uh, you can customize this. If you have a right align camera or something like that, uh, we can fix things up because we tried our best to think of everything. Um, but if we forgot something again, just leave us a comment, let us know. So we have the main options here. The first one is flip alert and it's default to no. So if you set this to yes, basically the alert is gonna start on the right side of the screen. This will make it actually start on the left side and be kind of flipped so that it, it comes out from left to the right. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, then we have these two offsets here. So this is the alert area. So let me actually send through a test and I'll point this out directly. Um, basically, the ball will go to where you set this kind of invisible box on the screen. So the box by default is in the middle. Let's say you wanted this to kind of go up and to the right. Let's, you know, you wanted it to be out over here in the corner for some reason. We can actually increase this offset here um, horizontally, and then we can adjust this one um, vertically as well. And let me just uh, kind of, I don't know if I'm going to be able to max this out here, but let's just give it a try and send through another one. We'll see here that it's actually um, offset quite a bit over here, um, away from the very middle of the screen. So you can see here that I kind of just pushed it up to the right. And um, just by the way, we are on like a beta version for the full release. The ability to move it even further on the screen will be in the final version. So these uh, sliders will have a bit higher of numbers available for you. Now we have the machine offset horizontal and vertical. So basically, if you wanna move the machine around, you can do so as well by adjusting these sliders and um, a similar kind of deal where um, if you kind of adjust these as you need to, you can move it left, right, up and down. And then that will be for the left, right, and this one will be for up and down. And then finally, we have machine scale and you can actually increase this up to uh, 150%, but let's say you wanted a really tiny machine, this is gonna look quite funny, I'm going to be honest. But if you just don't like the size of the machine and the ball, you can set that down to 50 and send through a test. And you'll see here that the machine comes um, quite down a lot. And then the ball will pop out and still go back to the kind of um, position that you set it to align to. So that's all that we have for the main options that I think is really important. There's very simple options. Like if you don't like that starburst in the background, you can disable it. Or if you don't like the color, um, you can actually change the color right here. And uh, if you don't like the stars that appear as well, you can disable those as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave those off for the next time I trigger one of these alerts so that you can see what that looks like. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the next options, which are the text options. All right, so the text options are pretty straightforward. However, the first one is um, just a little bit interesting. We're actually using a custom font for the design here. Um, so if you go ahead and just um, send through a test, you'll see the font that we're using. If you don't like this font, just set this to no, and then you can choose a Google font family here. So these are all the Google fonts available to you. Um, one that we were messing around with that we liked a lot was Chewy. Um, so if I set this to no and then I'll send through a test, you'll see um, kind of what Chewy looks like. So let's go ahead and just send through uh, one with this set to no and then Chewy. I think it's a pretty solid font. 
Um, you know, it's just really the vibe you're going for on your stream. Um, and then to kind of keep things easy as well, uh, we have the top text size, which is going to be this text right here, and then the color for the background and then the color for the actual text. So you can change those uh, right here. And then you can actually change what is in the text as well. So right now it's just set to name being the person that, um, you know, gives you a sub or whatever um, you're using this for uh, that will be able to be customized. So you can put customize this at the um, kind of end here and then go ahead and send through a test and you'll see that um, you can set the text basically to whatever you want. And then if you wanted to, you could actually change the text font for um, the bottom font, which is this one right here. Again, this will ne be a uh, need to set to no um, for that to work. Though. And then we have the same options as well, the text size, the background color, the text color itself, and then the text use. And then finally, we didn't forget about the messages as well. Um, you have the message text size. So this would be like if someone, you know, donates and sends through a message, you can customize um, the text size there. Um, you can set this to white usually is a, a really solid color to use for your messages and then just have a shadow of black. Um, and then finally, uh, the big one I would say that a lot of you are probably going to be interested in is the actual LED. So you can customize the message on the LED if you wanted to. For example, you could put name in um, semi or, um, in brackets here, and then you could put, you know, thank you or whatever. And then when the machine appears and shows a message on the LED, it will bring in the name of the person that's, um, you know, triggering the alert and display it on the screen right here and scroll through it um, on a nice little loop as well. So um, whoever's uh, participating, you can make that like a nice little um, Easter egg. You could put funny messages or, you know, whatever you want to do on that LED. OK, and moving on, we have a very simple set of settings. Uh, we have the machine colors. So basically, this is the color of the machine. We have the base color, which is the kind of you know base of the machine, the main color that's going to be displayed. We have some accents, and outline color, and even a highlight color. So uh, I'm not going to dare to change this too much, but let's just say I wanted, uh, let's just go crazy here. We'll just make it look awful. Uh, let's pick, um, I'm usually pretty decent with retro wave colors here. So let's try to just give this like a retro wave-ish vibe. Oh no, this one isn't going to look great. I already can tell that this one isn't going to be good. Um, but let's go ahead. Oops. Let's go ahead and send through another event. And you'll see here that, um, you know, the colors will be updated on the actual machine. Honestly, okay, I'm not going to lie. It looks pretty decent. I'm uh, pretty surprised on that one. But um, you'll notice that like the ball color and um, the colors for this then don't really fit. Um, don't worry, we'll be able to update that as well. And you can do that here in the prize colors. So basically there's uh, four different ball colors um, or capsules would probably be a better term. Um, so you can choose the base of those capsules that display both in the machine and then kind of randomly pop out. So if you didn't notice already, um, let's just set these all to like both the same. Uh, actually, let's choose some different colors here. Um, if you change these up, You'll notice that the ball, let's make one just black so you can really see here. Um, and then we'll do one that's white as well, just to kind of demonstrate. But the capsules will uh, have random colors and then the prize um, that's chosen will also come from a random color as well. So you'll see in here, there's um, black ones, there's gonna be these kind of like teal blue ones, and there's gonna be white ones as well, kind of mixed in. And then this color will be randomized based on uh, who won. And then finally, we have the background color for the prize. Um, that's actually like a little section that maybe you don't notice fully. Um, so basically, when the machine falls down here on the side, all of your custom images are going to be in. And actually, let me just go ahead and scale this up to its max um, whoops, so that we can um, better see that. So I'll send one more alert through and then you can kind of see what's going on there um, just to um, bit better and that will kind of move us to the prize images so you actually see here the images that we set are going to be used on the side of the machine and then of course they'll be used for the capsules themselves so as you kind of um, look through here you can see that um, basically we have five different images that you can upload and then one that we call the rare prize image um, so that will be the one that will have a um, slider which is actually right here um, that gives you a percent chance of getting that prize. 
So um, all these will be even, and then this one will be based on the percent that you sell. So go ahead and just upload your images here and um, you'll be able to use your custom emotes very quickly and easily. And honestly, that kind of brings us to the end of all the options. Um, the final option is the sound effects um, and the alert volume for this as well. So if you're looking to change the sound volume, I highly recommend just dropping in here and changing just the slider. And if you're one of those people that really likes to go crazy and customize like the winning sound or even the sounds the machine makes as it's falling um, down, you can change that out as well. I know I have it muted for this kind of demo, but um, I just wanted to kind of show you what was going on. I just noticed this ball kind of mixed in with this. So maybe I wouldn't choose these exact colors. I don't think black's the best uh, capsule color, but I'm doing my best live here. Um, so anyways, that covers all the options. And like I said, um, there is a special Halloween version coming out. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and click the um, secret link that I have here and we'll kind of um, show that off. Just a very quick look at it. So just to have something cool for the Halloween season, um, we spent a lot of time uh, making uh, the special version of it where there's kind of the slime rolling down on um, the colors, the cobwebs, and even some uh, spooky um, sounds and bats and stuff like that. So we wanted to keep it lighthearted and fun and uh, you know make sure that you guys enjoyed what we were making. And before I go, I did want to mention one last thing that I noticed that we'll um, obviously have kind of uh, corrected before we go ahead and put this out. But if you need to, you can go into the alert duration and um, up this or down it. This is obviously one with a fun animation and a fun kind of like random selection process. So this is a longer alert for sure. Um, but basically, however long you set it here, it will stay on screen for and then kind of um, fade out after that time expires. So um, yeah, make sure to go ahead and customize the options that you like. I think I'll be releasing a new video as well that kind of details how to uh, customize your options and then quickly send it through all your alerts. Uh, some of the feedback we've actually heard on um, stuff like this is that like, uh, oh, I went through and I spent an hour customizing it and now I have to do it for every alert. And we definitely hear you on uh, that issue. For example, if you went through and you customize your follower alert, um, you're going to have to go through and customize the other alerts that you're using with this as well. And uh, while we can't really control that too much, that's definitely a Streamlabs and Stream Elements thing. Um, there are some tricks that um, I can go into detail on in another video. I think it would just take way too much time, but eventually it involves um, copying the, um, the data um, from your field section and then kind of copy and pasting it. And it'll save you quite a bit of time but uh, I don't want to um, not cover that properly because I think it might confuse some people with um, how exactly it works. So uh, I'll definitely have another video coming out for that because I understand that. And then we'll have another video coming out specifically for the channel point redemption as well. Um, the alerts are just one aspect of this. Uh, we thought it'd be really cool to kind of introduce the channel point widget um, in a different way. Uh, I do want to know it only works for stream elements. That's not, um, you know, uh, that's not our decision. We want it to work with everything. If it does eventually um, become able to be easy to share with Streamlabs, we will make that update as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, make sure to check that out and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Later.